waste each other's time uh, because it financially impacts each other. Um, if you have, a, if you're an analyst and you sit there, you know, you're sitting there hours getting paid a bunch of money to realize, you know, what's going on. The uh, the author is in doing tricks and traps, and you're doing kind of the same thing. Anything that the, the author can do, you can eventually undo. Um, there's automated things that happen, but the human is always the best right now. Uh, there's a lot of tricks that the computers don't understand yet. Even with machine learning, AI, and whatever, they still don't, they still, they still don't get it. So uh, it always takes a human analyst to sit there and go to the next level. Uh, usually, you see this in detonation, like if you use wildfire or something like that. They'll do a verdict that it's benign, and you know for a fact that it's not benign. I run into this all the time, so I have to give them proof that it is not benign. And all the uh, all the IOCs are in there. Uh, so they go ahead, they see it, they change the verdict. And that's a win for me because I'm human uh, for now. Um, yeah. So the longer the malware campaign is around, the more profit it makes. You know, everybody knows that uh, it's malware is a service. So anybody who's just buying into it and then setting up their thing on the spot for like you know that that's one of the more uh, famous ones right now. Um, so yeah, I just said all that stuff too fast. Um, Show us your malware. Okay. <laughs> Everybody asks me to do that. I usually don't because uh, you know if you need to take over the world, you need to be president at that time, not before, because it's like the board. Anybody like. For example, uh, you know, you have uh, other companies, I don't want to name them, they'll sit there and they'll memorize what your program does and put a, get a signature and figure it out. And so, at the last minute, you always want to present it. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's all about layers, you know. Um, you, create a, you create a layer of security, the, or the malware creates a layer of security, you have, to, you have to go and figure it out. Usually, obfuscation is the number one key. It's super easy. Once, in, once it's in memory and it's doing everything, it's easy to get there. But then there's also tricks to, to find out whether or not you're doing that. Uh, and then right there, humans are losing AF. And because you know you can see the the uh, stack exchange uh, control C keyboard OB, so a lot of people copy stuff, especially malware authors. And again, time is money. And based on organized crime or nation state stuff or whatever, they're usually just copying stuff from each other's libraries. Uh, anybody like myself has like a malware suit, so you have tons of malware, you have tons of samples, you have tons of cool little snippets of like, hey, if I put this with this, it'll make it more difficult for an analyst to uh, put it together. It usually doesn't because it, you know a, a tune analyst will be like, oh, I totally recognize it from this part, so it's probably going to jump into here next. So you can usually, if it's a human, they'll be able to figure it out really quick. When you see the patterns and stuff. Um, and there's also these uh, IOC indicators of compromise uh, that everybody shares with each other uh, on an intelligent platform. So that's what you're paying money for, so you can have some information. Uh, so you can kind of be ahead of the curve. And uh, well, you're not ahead of the curve, you're behind the curve, obviously. And so then that's when you're usually getting infected. So we always want to be try to go as fast as you can. And uh, if you're, if you're, especially if you're a, a, an analyst, you're, getting, you're kind of going by the minute, you're getting like, you know, hey, this is, a, this is not where it's not going to stack me up on you. So I have to go ahead and, yeah, let's give you five, ten minutes to figure it out. And I have to pass it up to another, another analyst. Uh, and that's after all, already going through detonation and whatnot. Uh, detonation is basically just a fancy word of, you know, if you're trying to figure it out, you know, running it basically as if it were a user and uh, come back with what it is. But a lot of the malware analysts will go ahead and uh, put timers on there. They'll put things like, hey, is something in the memory buffer? If there's not, there's probably a machine coming to VM and look for VM flags to see if you're a VM. Uh, it'll see if there's any mouse movement, you know, if it's like a user, like a normal user. If it's not, and it's just sitting there waiting for, you know, something to happen. And there's like a, you know, like a, you're going to wait like 10 minutes. Nothing's happened in 10 minutes, so we'll wait another 10 minutes. And uh, usually the, the detonator will time up by then, and it'll come back and say it's been nine, nothing's wrong with it. And that's exactly what the malware author wants. Uh, and then, uh, so this is a PSA about tools and platforms. I'm a big person. I'm a big. Uh, I learned, I, I'm really old, so I learned stuff from the library. You know, of books and stuff. I didn't have a chance to use Google or anything like that. Uh, so I think it's very key to sit there and spend a lot of book time or you know, uh, time understanding how things work from the very, very bottom to the beginning, uh, instead of relying on specific platforms and stuff. Be familiar with them so you can kind of you know, uh, talk about them to somebody else. You know, who's younger. But um, the whole idea is, again, don't be a scripty. I see too many, too many of those are still around, and they're just growing in numbers, especially with like you know, uh, younger crowd. They, they want to have an easy end to profit, you know, to make money. Great. So, okay. <laughs> so they, uh, so they, uh, uh, yeah, they just, they just want to, they just want to make it. It's out of passion that drives them, and they just, they just see the money and they want to go to it. Later in life, they regret it because it's not what they wanted to do in the first place, and it's not at all interesting for them. 
Um, so yeah, always always spend time to you know, write your own tools um, and then see if you can match up with the uh, platforms that are out there. Then you'll be like, oh, hey, I know how to write that. I don't need it anymore. And then so if you need a little off the land, you can't. And it's always, it's always important because if somebody said, hey, you got to try to figure this out real quick, and you don't want all my tools set, well, then you don't look like you're like a pro. You, know, you want to be pro. Pro. OK. Um, they save time. Sure. Yeah, so you can always learn them. But um, if you think you're right, you always want to give it out there to everybody else. Because people say, well, no, you keep it secret. You know, that way the, the, you know, they're not going to know. But they're always going to know. So just share it, and then you can you know, get your, your rep up a little bit. It always helps. Okay, if you got to show awake, I don't know. And you don't even know you can hear me, but uh, that's one of my rants. I always rant about it. It's one of those scenarios. I built this out kind of in a, in a module kind of way, so hopefully if you guys like it, I have more. Um, so this talks, you know, you know built up in multiple scenarios. Uh, and then, so the base idea for this, this, this uh, series of scenarios is that, you know, uh, you have an email you've received and it has an attachment. And, uh, the email says, you know, hey, you need to open the attachment for whatever reason. You know, it's, it's an invoice, it's an important, you know, will from a family member, you know, something like this. You always, you always seem to be rushed to get, you know, social engineering to open it. Um, and it comes in many forms. You have documents, you know, Word, PDF, RTF, binary files, you know, it's a zip file to say, hey, uh, for whatever reason, this is a secure file, you need to open it, use this password, and then click on it, it's executable, it has like, you know, .xc. LNK for a link or .jpeg or and just try to fool you so that you don't you don't understand really what it is and you just want to open it right away. Um, and then eventually we'll get to a file list and living off the land type of malware, which is really uh, the, real, the real fancy stuff you see nowadays. Uh, that uh, all of antivirus and anti-malware uh, software platforms have uh, trouble understanding, and there's a lot of reasons why. And we'll go over that uh, later on. So this is scenario one. We're going to go ahead and talk about. Uh, analyzing a Word document. This is a, just a, basically a 2003 Word document, not a docx, you know, just a DOC file you can see. Um, and so we, we basically just slide it to your desk. It says, hey, you know, you need to analyze this to see whether or not, you know, whether it's bad or not. Yeah, the detonator wasn't exactly sure what it was or whatever, you know, so you need, you need to check it out. So again, like I said, this, this happens really time, this, this happens really fast in real time, but we're going to go over this and I'm going to try to talk about it. Like a, it's basically like a, like a 10 minute deal max, but uh, it's going to be a little, seem a little awkward with more details, especially if you're not aware of how, how stuff works. Has anybody already done malware reverse engineering? Okay. Yeah. All right. And then so the uh, the number one idea we were going here is like you know is this thing bad? It's only need to know your verdict. Is it bad or good? You know, whether it's bad for you, bad for somebody, or whatever, is, is it just bad? Um, so here we have our lab set up. Uh, my entire lab I had set up. I put it on the front book. Uh, I'll talk about that later. Which is pretty neat. Um, so, uh, and the, the specific malware, I'm going to have the slide, I'm going to have the slides ready and stuff. They're on the, uh, on my GitHub, but uh, you can just, you know, search for it, you'll find it, you can reverse it and kind of, kind of go along with the slides and stuff to see how it worked. And so a lot of people, they'll get it, they'll, you know, where to begin, you know, how, you know, how do you do this? Um, again, you don't have too much time, um, so you just kind of have to be familiar with what IOC, IOA is, indicator of compromise, indicator of attack. One of them is uh, just kind of tells you, like, hey, if you see this hack or this, this uh, URL in your system or IP in your system, you know, chances are your, your system probably talking to C2, which is a command and a control system, which is how the, how, how the bad guys control your system, you know, uh, you know it, 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 it affects your systems. They kind of tell them to do, and they all work together as an army to do what it is uh, that they need to do at the time. And you're not usually aware of it at all. Unless you have all these like you know, strategic things in place, you can see your traffic. Um, so, yeah, so uh, and the things always change. So, like an IP can be bad one day, and then they'll they'll go ahead and clean it and fix it, and it'll be good the next day. So you always have to be aware of it. You just can't whitelist it or you can't blacklist it because then all of a sudden you can't get email. Everything's in AWS now, so everything's always changing. Buckets are always all over the place. So you always have to be like you always have to be you know in your threat intelligence always be understanding that hey that was bad and you have to go back and check to make sure. So if you have a good uh, service that uh, provides you that information to where you know you don't get that much bad you know, malware, so, uh, that's kind of one pain. Those are really really expensive. You learn how to percent. It usually takes some delay. Uh, and the malware authors are they're waiting for that delay. So the longer the delay is, the less you're going to know you're infected. Um, so this one again, it's a word file. Uh, so it's a document, uh, and we just this is the, the name of it. You know that, uh, that I that I captured it at. And that's basically the, the first part, I think we'll talk about it in the next slide. That's just basically your, your, your Linux timestamp or your epoch time. 
So you always want to save your artifacts. Eventually, you know, you basically start building one by one, and you usually start getting like hundreds and thousands and millions of um, messages, and you can trade them with other um, malware groups. You know, anti malware groups and whatnot. Um, and you would usually see, like on Twitter, you see a big, big, hey, I got this. You know, I got like you know two, uh, two or four gigabytes. Anybody want to trade? And then everybody will trade, and everybody eventually gets all. Of them. The problem is a lot of the sites out there they. They, uh, they get taken down because of the whole you know, idea that, hey, you can't share bad stuff because you know, it's not good to learn from that. So a lot of the professional services sell this stuff too, even though it's supposed to be out there for everybody to learn, you know, to learn and understand. Um, so again, like I said here, this first part is a epoch time. It's the second from some period of time. I don't even know. You probably know. So the epoch time was it's seconds from like 1960 something or whatever. It's the right. birth of Linux in 1970. Wasn't yeah. It? All right. Yeah. Something like oh, that. Or, just or Unix. Mind. Sorry. Yeah. No. And uh, so anyway, so in in your any type of any type of uh, you know, Linux shell that you have or whatever, you have the date command, and you can go ahead and reverse it. Um, it's determined on VSC, which is whether the Max or not. But like uh, for example, this is a uh, Linux on this Chromebook that they put on for beta is uh, uh, Debian. Uh, Scratch and I, remember. So um, this is how you decode this. And basically, when you type in this command, so they can do this. And even in little forms, so this tells you that I captured this January 29 at this period of time and this time zone. Um, so and you can catalog the original file name, which is OK. Some malware um, authors actually check the file name to see if it's been changed, to see if it's been cataloged or whatever. Then they know that they you know that they're, they don't want to run, then you stop. They just give you a, ah, I'm not going to run. But in the debugger, you know, once you go there, you, re you go into dynamic analysis or behavioral analysis, you'll be able to change that and just say it's fine. You know, the, the file name matches whatever you're looking for. But uh, for this thing, we're just doing static analysis, so we're OK. Um, again, we're still in scenario one. We're doing static analysis tools. Uh, the first one that comes with your box, your Linux box, is a Shasun. So we're going to go ahead and run a 256 uh, query to generate our uh, 256 Shasun on this. So and uh, the first thing you can do is you you know if you don't know what to do or whatever you can just put it in Google or you can put it in virus total very common and it'll tell you you know hey what what the community has so far found out about this this change this number can change uh, at uh, any point in time it mutates um, and that just means you can you can you can actually open the file in an editor you know save it like you know uh, ultra edit or you know some kind of text editor or whatever change one character and then save it and then it'll go ahead and it'll change the whole thing so then it'll, it'll be something different. But it'll get, it'll get found out fast enough. Um, so those are tricks that, uh, that occur. Uh, but nowadays, it happens really fast, so nobody's really bothered to do But back in the day, it was pretty popular. Um, so for example, here's the virus total. Um, so this says, hey, 36 out of uh, what, 56 engines detected this is bad. You know, something's wrong with this. Is something you want to run. So it's always good to have that. And you know, if you have like less than a minute to, to tell your boss, hey, this is what it is, um, this may be good enough for your report. Close the ticket. Um, otherwise, probably not. You're probably not getting paid that much to just do that. Because anybody can do that, really. Um, the next part is uh, you go ahead and you run the file command, and then it'll go ahead and tell you. Um, it tells you right here uh, the file uses three sets of tests: perform the file, the file system test, the magic test. So those are like the first like 16 bytes of the file tells you what the file really is. So it doesn't matter what if it's a bin dot jpeg dot exe or whatever. It'll tell you what it really is supposed to be. This is what it, you know, this is how it's going to want to open. Um, so this tells you right here that it's an XML 1.0 document. It's actually attached to very long leg, uh, not legs, but at lines. Um, and this is, so yeah, it's, uh, it's okay. okay. And the next one uh, that your your system comes in, and this is not downloading any, really any other tool, it's string. So you go ahead and you do an all, uh, meaning you know, you're know you going to run it for the whole file and not just a part of you know, particular sections, like in an executable, you have multiple sections and stuff. So it's going to scan the whole file, and then this is going to scan the whole file for anything that's like, you know, uh, on CF16 or, you know, Unicode, which it'll hide. So this will just do your ASCII stuff. Um, this will do the more uh, modern, advanced stuff. Always scan for both. Uh, and there's tools out there that do one single scan. Uh, there's a lot of places that hide in. You always, you always want to get as many places as you can all at once. So here, we, uh, we go ahead and run strings on it. We get 2.9 KLNs of string. We load up strings search through. Um, a lot of them can be obfuscated, but it can take just scrolls for days, so you don't have time for that. Uh, so you've got to move ahead. Yes. But you, you log this stuff, catalog it, and you have it ready for your report. 
In this particular part, you can see I ran a, ran a command, and uh, I think within the second line, you can see right here it says, hey, this is a workout document. Again, all this information can be fake, but this is probably not going to be fake because they don't try to put too much effort into that. Like I said, everybody's really lazy. So this tells you right here, hey, this is a, probably a word file. You know, so it's already had the, the character because of a word file. So we're going to go with it. You know, we have tools for word files, which is great. Um, so right now, we're like, what? We're like about a minute in. You know, believe it or not, this just happens really fast. And automation happens even faster. This is like if you're sitting at your desk just kind of doodling with it. So um, we have the information that we captured this, you know, artifact in the wild at this point in time. We have the uh, Shock 256. We have a large full report of how many engines detected the specimen. We say we show here it's a uh, wood file, you know, and it shows this kind of matches up together. Uh, if they're totally different, then something's trying to trying to fool you, you know, that fools you and stuff. And so we can get that out. Well, let's go ahead and drill in. Um, so the next part that we have, we have the OLE tools. Uh, some people don't know how to say this, but it's OLE. Basically, it's a Microsoft thing uh, that was created a long time ago. Uh, more research here, you know, you can click there. But there's a there's a packet of tools um, that we can use us, you know, to, to go ahead and take everything apart. Let's go ahead here. So the first one is OL, uh, OLE ID. And it'll go ahead and tell us, you know, hey, you know, what's up with the file? This one, unfortunately, because I don't know what it heard is, it didn't, it didn't come out well. It said, hey, this is probably not, not bad. Probably isn't stuff on here. So there could have been some diddling with the file that were able to return this right away. So if you have one thing that you, you flag on and this is this is it, and you return back saying it's benign, you know, then they won. So you know, that's why you got to continue with more more tools to test. In fact, because we saw, you know, if we scroll through the strings here, you can see a bunch of uh, base 64 stuff, which you usually wouldn't see in a file like that. So the next one is uh, OLE DDA, and this is a script uh, parser. And it'll go ahead and uh, it'll parse the file. So we go ahead and run the command, and it'll show right here. Hey, it's taught, you know, it's Word 2003 XML. It's a lot of old stuff. The reason, uh, one of the reasons uh, uh, malware is so prevalent on like uh, Windows systems is because Windows is uh, backwards compatible with like so many things. You run stuff, it would run in DOS, still runs today. No problem. Uh, uh, unlike Max, which Max, you know, they have planned uh, uh, obsolescence. So if it doesn't run specifically within this period, period of time and your Mac doesn't run it, it won't support it at all. You don't have to back it a bunch of your tools to, to run that stuff. Um, so then another message that came up saying, hey, this, this, uh, this file is probably not encrypted. So that's kind of cool. And uh, this is the output from from uh, OLA VBA and stuff like that. So it already shows like suspicious flags. It shows that, hey, there's some kind of shell going on. Uh, which is not common in a you know, normal Word document that you would from like, you know, coworker or something. You know, they're, and, and then there's like these hex strings, there's all this weird stuff in here going on. These are all these are all flags. It's something that you're probably on the right track that you know you're probably not wasting your time too much. Because um, a lot of the malware analysis is wasting time. So you're linking stuff that uh, could be you never really can put a judgment on it until you until you've gone through the whole gamut. And even then, you're not even, you can you can go to sleep not even being sure. So here we have some more commands for OLA VBA. We have the code. Uh, we were we went and, uh, ran through that. Didn't come with anything too useful. It was kind of surprising. Uh, then we did the VOP, which is uh, for free obfuscation. And this one was the uh, the one that we really uh, had the, uh, the juicy results. So here uh, we went ahead and run it again. And we run it again. We see a lot more uh, information. It shows the obfuscated strings, and it actually pops up an IOC and it's showing that command to exe is being called. Uh, anytime a command X, this is, this is basically creating a shell on your Windows system and it's doing stuff with it. Uh, and also auto open and takes control away from the user. Um, you know, this is, now we're on the right track. Now this is like where things are getting steamy. Um, so this tool actually dumps it out like this uh, to where the, uh, the decoded stuff, you know, so this is basically showing how you put the strings together. Uh, this is the actual decoded stuff, um, which is, I don't know why he made it like this. I mean, Cool. And I've tried all the flags and I can't get it to work. It pops out you know, like this, which would be nice. So I went ahead and uh, we also wanted to talk about. Uh, oh yeah, it does a JSON output, so uh, JSON output. And so we're able to do this, uh, put it out to a JSON file, which is basically a text file with JSON keys. And uh, it, it, it's one important thing to know, like for example, uh, shell tools and stuff uh, for whatever uh, shell you're in. So this will have to be bash. So I'm running a bunch of shell tools in here, so I can cut all that stuff out you know, that we had going on here. Uh, this is like a one-liner that you usually would have to think about like on the spot, you know. Uh, 
So you want to be very familiar with this kind of shell programming. It's really helpful. A lot of people don't like really learn programming too much anymore, but it helps in anything you do, whether it's system administration, malware, reversal, anything like that. Um, yeah, so scripting, this is what I'm talking about. So, uh, this, the system that I did everything on, the whole presentation, the, the testing, the, the lab stuff with, it's a stock Chromebook, you know, the latest firmware and software, and the Linux beta, which they have, you can enable it pretty easy. And nothing special, it's not in developer mode, it's Debian night stretch. Uh, and then you just add your packages and stuff. Um, so yeah, the, the glue puts everything together, it's a creative shell scripting, and that's the stuff that you would just kind of do on the fly. Um, yeah, if you want to waste your time with GUI, you don't have to. I see a lot of people always jumping do GUI, right click, and copy, right click, paste. You know, that's, that's the time, time stuff that eats, eats away. Um, so here we go. I'm glad the screen could capture this whole thing or whatever. So anyway, we have, so there's the JSON file. Here's the, some creative uh, shell scripts that we did. And then we're able to see here, uh, when we go ahead and cut the file, that this is, this is all the stuff that the Windows stuff is trying to do at that one point in time when you open your file. So it puts it all together, does this in memory, and it goes ahead and it tries this. So you can see a bunch of you know stuff on here, commands and things to do functions and stuff. And then you see this like you know this big type of uh, like array or whatever. Like, you know this is a real interesting part. And then you see a bunch of flag stuff. So if you're familiar with Windows, it's always going to be familiar with like you know Linux, Mac, Windows and stuff. But um, this is a specifically Windows, and, you know, so it's, it's important to make sure you do. And again, this is a unscrew command uh, programming and stuff. So if you do like DOS. More DOS and stuff like that. A lot of this will be familiar. Um, so yeah, for example, here, this is where you know you set a variable in your environment, and then you know you can sit here and look at this all day and not be exactly clear what's happening. It took some time, um, you know, you know, whatever, you know, ten seconds or whatever, but it's, that's enough time uh, to realize this is like actually some type of um, data array that it was using. Uh, kind of it's a kind of it's a, like an alphabet you know, where you where you use it. And I'll show you an example here in the future. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's a decoder key array. Yeah. So basically, it starts from here and it's here. And to simplify it as an example, um, let's say, for example, um, we would have it like this, right? We have we have a through f, and then basically this is our index here, the one space index. And then if we wanted to go ahead and say, like, let's say we wanted to spell that b, we would go ahead and uh, our first letter for b uh, would be four. So then we have four. That would spell d. And then you go on, you know, five is, you know, E A D. So, you, so if you have this pointing to the right things, you know, you can actually spell this word out of this alone. Do you guys understand that part? Okay. Um, and that's basically what's happening up here. Um, those numbers that we saw here, all here, they're just pointing to special places here um, as, it, as it goes through the big for loop, and that's just it's just it's just powering through really fast. Um, and so we went ahead and we hooked up something. But again, we're on a Linux system and not a Windows system, so we can't like emulate it in Windows, um, say what it is. So we basically rewrote the uh, the loop that I had that we saw uh, in, a, in a more shell friendly way. Um, so we have here, you know, basically we're going to echo out the screen as we go through it, and it's going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and decode at the same time. So we go ahead and decode it through the, through the first run, and this is, these are the uh, variable environments that were set in Windows. But though we're not necessarily interested in them, we would move them uh, forward if. Uh, couldn't find anything or we needed to dig deeper. But we already see that it does certain things. Like, you know, the POW, that's probably PowerShell, that's probably some kind of PowerShell stuff. And it's cutting up the it's cutting up the word here. So it probably comes up to PowerShell, it's probably doing something you already see the new object identifier and the net web, net web client stuff. So you understand that you know something's happening here. But again, like we're not interested unless we were actually, you know, to go deeper you know, or the boss said, hey we need to we need to find out what's happening. Is it targeted to us? Is the station saying, you know, what is it? You know, um, so, but we, we do find this part here. Uh, these are our IOCs. These are our indicators of compromise that we're interested to see. Uh, if any of you on the network, you know, like for example, uh, has touched these or tried to go there, that means that the, that means that the uh, word file is open. It's automatically trying to launch these. So we can see a bunch of these, you know, kind of you know, squeeze into here and stuff. And uh, again, we can see what happens. It tries to download a file from these URLs and then run it. So, you know, what it's doing is it's, uh, doing another state. Uh, usually, it's like executable is trying to download from these. Uh, these websites have been compromised. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, um, so yeah, this was our string. Uh, again, you can just go ahead and split this out, and you'll get these uh, five URLs. And each one of these, at the time, they're now extinct. But at the time, if you went ahead and like you revisited them with your web browser, you scroll to download them, double get or anything, it would automatically give you a .exe, uh, which would have the next part of the, uh, the payload. 
So you basically have your dropper, the, the, the wind file opens it up, brings it into memory, pulls, I mean, it pulls it down, executes it, the, uh, the executable, and it's basically just going to start trucking through your system, whether it's um, whether it's Emotad or GANCRAB or whatever it is, it's going to start trucking your system and anybody with you. And if your system is set up badly, or you have a bunch of SMB shares all over the place, it's going to start really, really fast. Um, so here, we're, we're about five minutes in, um, and we, you know, so what do we have the different between Super 1 and Super 2? Is that uh, this file was originally verdict by you know, the, the, uh, the lay ID that it was, you know, it was not, not malicious and that's incorrect. And, but we did identify that it's a you know, 2003 file, and there's a bunch of ILC indicators in there. We can see macro obfuscation, which is another flag. You know, a bunch of points can add up to say it's going to be bad. You can see a call that starts with command uh, and PowerShell. The obfuscation key was found. That's our decoder array. And so, yeah, we were able to decode it. Um, it was all successful. We got five URLs um, for the next stage. And so with our mini report, um, we have 13 findings in less than 10 minutes. And we can actually build the story of what happens, you know, just by seeing what, what they want. And we, didn't have, we haven't run it yet. We haven't technically run the actual location. This is just from looking and opening and reading all the pages and stuff like that, you know, while, while sitting in uh, the rest. We're able to find this information. Um, and we're able to just, you know, whip this out really quick. And so for this scenario, yeah, this is, this is, uh, this thing is bad. So the wrap up here, and this is almost over. Um, so we have the 13 solid findings. We have all the information, and then uh, we're really, you know, we're going to go to the final report. A lot of people don't understand that, aside from this fun stuff of taking everything apart, you always have to tell the person that's paying you, you know, what you spend your time doing, and this is like what it is and stuff. So um, you have to understand in like an easy way, because uh, they're not going to, a lot of people aren't going to understand all that gibberish. So you're going to have to tell them, like, hey, this is bad, and, and why, you know, and why, to where it makes sense to them, to where they can continue. Um, like I said, this is a mini-series of talks that I have built and stuff, so uh, the one of the next parts that I wanted to show uh, next time, if you guys like this stuff or not, um, I wanted to show how the detonation works and stuff, and then you can see here, you know, so the, you basically have the command creating another command, and that's the, uh, the obfuscated stuff that I, I didn't do code for you. But it basically opens up three processes, um, and it finally calls the PowerShell uh, right here, and then, you know, downloads the files and goes and executes them. And then uh, the first executable is called 440, and then that one called another one called 440. So you'll see if you have Process Hacker, uh, you'll see it looks, you know, spawn out really quick, and then just start opening and downloading, and then it all goes silent and stuff. So uh, that's the uh, that's a fascinating part of how this stuff kind of lives in your system. People have no idea it exists. Um, yeah, like I said, there's tons of artifacts. PDF can do the exact same thing. Uh, RTS can do the exact same thing. There's so many things that can do the, yeah, the exact same thing. It's just a matter of how creative the malware is. Uh, I was going to create a YouTube video on this, but uh, you know, with all the YouTube channels, it's going to be a YouTube video. Hopefully, you guys can still hear me, but if you have any questions, uh, if you have any comments or anything like that, uh, this will be on my GitHub thing. Contact me on here. Uh, for example, that you found it worked, but you kind of proved that. Uh, I can't place. tell you where I found it, but I didn't find it in a while. Um, <laughs> so so I, I, what, what I do is somebody who likes to collect these kind of things, because I used to write all these kind of things, is you create these little um, systems to where you know like they're either a Raspberry Pi somewhere or whatever, and it just collects all these things. You can just be an open system and it's automatically happening. Uh, one of the one of the, one of the easier things is like you can just sit there and scrape Twitter, so you have like a you know either writing or whatever, you'll, and everybody just posts all the stuff they have, and you'll sit there and just download it automatically. And then you can you know, come home and you're like, oh, what did I find today? You know, and then so then you can start playing with this stuff. But yeah, this is real life stuff. You know, it's existed at one point in time. So I thought this talk was really interesting. I was ready to hear a holy war about Gidra versus Radare versus you know, <laughs> like that that sort of holy. And I like that you didn't wade into that. Although I would have been interested. I think the thing that really struck me was that you just used. Linux like command line, yeah, yeah. Right? and because I, I read that you know, oh yeah, just strings and yeah. and and like and some you know some said said wizardry yeah. uh, that really I, I really uh, I thought that was really interesting, and, and, and that's exactly one of my points in my or my rants is like anybody can do this. There's no special platforms that people can offer you that don't do this. All they're doing are like people my age who've discovered all this stuff, re repackaging it and selling it to, to corporations for millions of dollars because that's exactly what it is. But anybody can do this, you know. So and that's, so if you learn the fundamentals. And you understand how files work and how, you know, how everything's a file and like and stuff like that. You can you can do it yourself. You know, you just need to know have to have to, you have to sit down time and the and the learn time and stuff like that. So 
Uh, and so for all the systems that say, oh yeah, nobody can get our antivirus system, there's always a way, you know, so, and you can learn it, and it's usually because you can only interpret files in certain ways, so if you feel, you know, you can trick that, um, then you got yourself, you know, your own, uh, your own malware problem. So it's really easy. Thank you. Are a lot of those tools you had on there all native Linux tools? That yeah, so all, all the packages, I put all the references on there, like all the OLA tools, that's all That's all this community um, stuff that, uh, uh, I forgot his name, but he got the catcher he wrote, he wrote on there. He has millions of tools on his, on his GitHub, and he every, tells everybody to use them. There's there's so many malware uh, or anti-malware people out there that have so many free tools. Um, like I said, what it is, they, 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 corporate, they, they corporate buy it and they sell it to you, but anybody can do this. It's really easy. Uh, you always want to be aware of what's on your system. Um, you never want to accept USB keys from anybody. You know, just whatever blind. You never want to download stuff. You know, it will pop up and You know, your Adobe Flash Player needs updating and whatnot because I don't even have Adobe on my system, so it's like, you know, um, that kind of stuff. So, but I download it just to examine it because I want to know what it does. But I know how to do it safely to where I don't infect myself using Linux is a good example, um, or, or virtual boxes or you know any type of VM and stuff like that. I can do it with the But uh, yeah, any other questions or anything? Uh, when you look at this malware, what do you think is the skill level of the malware engineer? You know, uh, is this simple or is this, you know? Uh, most, most malware engineers, like I said in the beginning, are lazy. Mm -hmm. So they just copy somebody else's stuff that worked. Mm -hmm. um, and that's usually it. You know, so I, this specific sample, what would you say? Uh, nah, this is, this is, <laughs> it's, it, like I said, so like for example, what I do is I copy a bunch of the snippets. And yeah. I, can, I think the swordfish, you know, I don't know if you ever saw that movie. They show him like the Hydra, you know, it's all yeah. <laughs> So back in the back in the nineties we used to be the the, the the virus creation lab, BCL. And you can actually go, hey, I like this part, I like how this does it, I like I like the uh, the uh, uh, permutations that it does here. And you can just pack, kind of package it all together, and that's kinda of how it is now with your with the uh, with your malware as a service. You say, I want these features, you know, uh, these are the engines I know that it's gonna check. I wanna be able to defeat those and stuff, and then they just kinda of fix it all together. If it works, who knows, you know, um, you have to run it through a thing, but the minute you run it through any kind of thing, just like how you search for a domain name that you're interested in, if you don't buy it at that point in time, somebody else is going to buy it, they are senior see you're looking at it, so you're going to be interested, in probably back from that. So yeah, it's, it just, it's just a matter of uh, uh, just playing with it and seeing if it works. But that's what Malware, that's what I'm to do. There's tons of Malware, I'm going to the Malware from the juice, see how they hold it. Um, and so it's, it's always interesting to see feedback from each other. They'll, test, they'll play, kind of see you up with each other and stuff, and say, hey, can you detect my stuff? And they'll be like, no, I can't detect it. And then like, oh, well, you know, can this software detect it? And so it's just, it's just a game and stuff. And so until, until uh, it becomes like really invisible to any kind of system. But it, it all depends. It's super targeted on what you want to hit. So if you know, like, if you want to hit a company and the company, you know, use a McAfee or something like that, and that's all you need to do, or you know, they use Semantic or something, then they, you can build it specifically for that, and it'll only work in that company. But some other analyst in another company is like, dude, you know, silence should have detected this or whatever. And well, they didn't have silence. Well, then somebody knew they didn't have silence. It's just, it's just a big, it's a big crazy game, and so we yeah, had this like a mini series that says, so I have tons, tons of material that I've uh, learned over time, and I can show you guys all of this if you guys are interested. If you guys are not, I'll talk about other stuff. But you know, this is really interesting to me. I like talking about this stuff because you know, that's how that's how you do stuff. Uh, it's my world. The well, funny thing is, I'd like to see a real world uh, scenario. So uh, just a quick demo. Just come in, say you came in, email or however, and then I want to see you dissect it. I want to see you actually. Work with it sure. going through the steps. Yeah. That's what I would like to see. Yeah, I mean, I tried to because you know it would have been really quick, but this was basically I yeah, like everything on all the screenshots that I did, all the stuff on the material on there is right there. I did it all. But right. yeah, next time I'll I'll sit there and I'll do it. But it's, you know, depends no, on no, I on get it. Okay. But if you if you do the overrun, you know, if you do it in series as well, yeah. you know, this is how to capture it. This is how to like unpack it. Yeah, yeah. You know, get, get the hash and I get you. Yeah. And that would be that would be kind of the thing. I'll show you guys how to, you know how I do all that from all the things. But this was just a word document. I don't even know how long it took, but you know, uh, if I did all of it, it would be forever. Can you also talk a little bit about like, what seems to be the most efficient ways for um, uh, what works in terms of getting someone to click on a download? Oh, okay, yeah. Click on, or even like a text, because now a lot of it's coming through text yeah. and all kinds of different ways. Oh, absolutely. Like, so how about like, some of the newer and the, yeah. and the more different ways to do it, and like what really is the problem Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I'll do that. Now, that's one of, the, that's one of the, the fun things that I have anytime I get like a, uh, something or another. I never use like the means that they, uh, 
they wanted me to do is like, they expect me to click on it, so I'll use, you know, curl or something like that to, to go to, to the back end and see what it says. It'll come up with a bunch of JavaScript usually, and then I'll always put it in request mode to see what the servers are doing in the background too, to see where I'm getting pushed to and why. But yeah, I'll give a, I'll give a talk on that uh, and show how that, how the, uh, the interface of that works. And it's really easy to follow because it's all just, we're using old technology to push it around, you know. It's just, it's just the way of fooling people with all the bamboos and stuff. That's that's the newer part, you know, yeah. the stuff up front. And then there's also like hardware-based malware, or affects hardware, and then it, like Lenovo, I think, had a recently. Yeah, so you, you can affect the, the uh, depending on what, what type of software you have that runs and talks to the, the firmware and stuff. If your firmware is writable in any way, like, a, like the old, uh, the uh, Linksys W or GT where you can sit and rewrite the firmware that you can have your you know, router put out more data, more power, whatever. Uh, it, as long as you have those little tiny spaces in there for that to happen, you can do that to anywhere. You know? That's why IoT infections are so big right now, is because they have those little spaces where you can actually update the firmware yourself with your own firmware. What infections? I'm sorry. I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. IoT. IoT or IoT? IoT, yeah. That's why I like you know, the internet thing. So if you buy like some like Chinese router off whatever, like ten bucks, uh, and then all of a sudden you wonder why you have a weird traffic in your system, you're like, oh, what happened? You know, and it's like, well, somebody found that your system was talking out. They went ahead and re-uploaded their own firmware in your system, and now it's like, now it's like, you might you, know, you think you're going to Google, but you're not. You know, if you look at your, you know, checking what your IP is going to, it's not going to eight 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 eight. It's going to some weird number. You're like, where, where is that? And you trace it. You know, or you get a call from Amazon saying, hey, stop hacking us. You're like, well, I'm not doing anything. You know. And what it is is somebody created that as a jump point to pivot over, and you know, and they just left me in the way. But yeah, so yeah, anything you can like, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, that, that kind of stuff is always there's always kind of stuff. But I can do a talk on the firmware hacking and stuff. That'd be good. Awesome. Are we good? Yeah. Uh, if you guys are interested in how viruses work, uh, just look up uh, VX Heavens. It's short for virus heavens. Oh. It died years ago. It was called by the Russians. Um, but it was, there's a lot of articles on how uh, it was written. It, it goes up through uh, polymorphism, uh, metamorphic, and uh, pretty much your whole range of things. It's pretty really awesome. Uh, there's a GitHub on the whole dump. You just Google it. Uh, it can go down a pretty dark kind of like tunnel. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, my, my thing is, like, I'm a big collector of books. I have tons of books. If you look on Twitter, you can see like, my whole library that I recently built. Uh, I have all the original like 1990s uh, how to build virus and stuff, and like by Mark, I forgot his last name, but he actually wrote like you know how to do all this stuff, all the you know what polymorphism is, how to go ahead and apply it, and it still works today. You know everything, the algorithms and stuff are very similar. Um, it's very little changes, but um, you know it's, it's just the whole idea of hiding. Like I said, everybody's really lazy. Nobody really has to put too much brain power into it because it, the more complex you make something. More chances that it, you know, it is it's breaking. So people try to be very gentle on how they how they generate stuff. So it works all the time. All the most systems that it can. Uh, that's the whole idea. It doesn't matter. You know, unless they're targeting specific to you, they they can run it on most anything. Because you know, in the case of Windows, is very backwards compatible, very friendly on uh, on letting you. But you can even go to yeah, you know, uh, good, good. All right.